Where's your dead bodies? Where's your dead bodies? Hurry up, bring them out. I'm a busy man. Hello, I'm the corpse collector. It's my job to go round and collect all the dead bodies. Ever since last year, 1348, down in Malcolm in Dorset, when that ship arrived and there were some sailors on it who were dead. Ever since then, it's been terrible here in England. People are dying everywhere. I've never been as busy. Oh, hurry up, hurry up. Achoo, achoo. I'm not feeling well either. I've got these red marks all over my arm. And I've got a bit of a lump under my armpit. Mind you, I should be all right. God's not going to punish me. I'm a good man. I never sin. I pray every day to God, so I'm going to be okay. Where's your dead bodies? Where's your dead bodies? Hurry up. I'm a busy man. Welcome, everyone, to the next video on medieval medicine, video number two. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, what was that all about? Well, what we're going to do today is just study just a couple of years in the time period, 1348, 1349, 1350. Very, very important years, hugely significant years in medieval Britain. Do you know what happened? Excellent, as you said, the Black Death. Now then. What was the Black Death? Well, even today, historians still argue amongst themselves, and scientists do, about what really caused it. But for us, all we need to know, really, there were two types of plague or Black Death. One was the bubonic plague. Bubonic, from the word bubos, the lumps under people's arms that used to grow. Bubonic plague. Now, if you got that, that's not very good for you, ladies and gentlemen, because we believe that there were fleas that lived on rats, and the fleas would bite into our bloodstream and poison it, and the poison would go round our bloodstream, and then all of a sudden we'd get headaches, fevers, we would be vomiting, we'd get these really painful buboes, and within a few short days, quite often, the result was death bubonic plague. At the same time, there was something called pneumonic plague. Now, this is caused by germs through the air, coughs and sneezes, spread diseases. So people are coughing and spluttering and infecting other people. Pneumonic plague. And again, with that one, terrible fevers, pain in the lungs, and you would cough up blood, and again, death could be the result. So the Black Death was a terrible time in medieval Britain. Now, today we know, hopefully, the causes of these diseases. Back then, they did not understand. They did not know the real causes. They saw the effects. They saw huge numbers of people die. In some smaller villages, the entire population was wiped out. So, remember they don't know the real cause, but they have to try and do something about it. So it's a good case study for us, ladies and gentlemen, because it shows us what people in medieval Britain, 1340s, 1350s, what they believed about the cause of disease, and therefore we can look at how they tried to prevent or cure the disease. So it's a very important case study for us. Now, for the rest of the video, I'm going to go through what they believed caused the disease. And every time we look at a cause, I'll put my thinking hat on and you can have some time to think. And once we've looked at the cause, we will look at their prevention or their cure, and we can link the two. Don't worry, I'll give you time to think. Now, of course, 
many many people remember religion was hugely important in medieval times the church was very powerful people believed that disease or bad things like a bad harvest were caused by god punishing us that was a cause judgment and punishment from god if that's their cause what would be their answer to that any ideas well people prayed praying to god regularly people would fast and deny themselves food and say god i am sorry if i've done something wrong here i am punishing myself please do not punish me there's a third and even more extreme thing there were a group of people called flagellants and they walked round stripped down to the waist and they would whip each other or whip themselves with whips as a sign of saying to God, look, if I've done something wrong, I am sorry, God. I am punishing myself. Please do not punish us, the flagellants. So this idea of religion is still very, very powerful in the time of the Black Death. Second cause, remember from video one, the position of the planets and the stars. Some people said because the planets are in such a way in the sky, we are being affected here on Earth. Answer? Use the astrology charts. Use magic. Carry lucky charms. Carry, if you were rich enough, precious stones. Would it work? But why are they doing it? Because they don't know the correct cause. Cause number three. Oh, what's that smell? Remember from video one, miasma, bad air, bad smells. They thought that that also was a possible cause of the Black Death. What's their answer for bad air, miasma? Any ideas? Probably the most famous. Ring a ring a roses, a pocket full of posies, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Posies. What are posies? Beautiful, beautiful bluebells, I think, from my garden. Oh, yeah lovely smell. Now then, they would think, if bad air is making us ill, if bad smells are making us ill, nice smells will keep us healthy. So they would walk around with a pocket full of posies, a pocket full of flowers. And indeed, the doctors, commonly known as plague doctors, they would wear a very strange outfit covered from head to toe. And then they would have a large beak, even bigger than my nose, ladies and gentlemen. And inside the beak, they would have sweet-smelling herbs or flowers right near their nose for protection, to prevent illness. Would it work? What do you think? Now, as well as the flowers, they also had the idea of, right, bad air is bad, making us ill. We've got to move the air around. So they would bring birds in and get them to flap their wings. They would ring bells and say, oh, the noise is going to sort of churn all the air up and make the air better. They would light fires. They would have candles everywhere. Indeed, some of the kings or the popes would sometimes sit totally surrounded by candles as an attempt to prevent the illness. Would it work? What do you think? Again, linked in with the bad air, the bad smells. The King of England at the time, Edward III, he sent a very famous letter to the Lord Mayor of London. And he said, look, you've got to clean up your streets and take away all the foul smelling rubbish. Would that work? Well, it might do. 
that actually wasn't quite a bad idea at all. If you get rid of the sort of horrible rubbish in the streets, maybe it would be cleaner and there'd be fewer germs or fewer rats. But remember, they didn't know that. It was just a lucky idea that was. But maybe that's not such a bad idea. Okay. Next cause. At that time around the world, there were volcanoes that were erupting. There were a few earthquakes. So in the 1340s, they said, aha, these volcanoes, these earthquakes have somehow created poison, poisonous fumes, which are affecting us. What's our answer? Poisonous fumes. It's the flowers again. It's the nice things. Of course, the volcanoes and the earthquakes weren't causing the disease, but they did not know that. Next cause. You remember from video one, the four humours, the theory of the four humours. Aha, I'm glad you do. Well, here they are. If all of a sudden you get ill, particularly if you are coughing up blood, they say, aha, you've got an imbalance in your humours. You have too much blood. Our answer? Bloodletting. Now, what they would do is sometimes make a cut and put on a hot cup and drain out blood. Or they would put on leeches and the leeches would suck the blood in attempt in their eyes to balance the blood. If you are vomiting and being sick, aha, you've got too much yellow bile. Therefore, we will give you some medicine called purges or emetics to make you vomit some more, to balance out the humours. They were their cures or preventions. Did they work? What do you think? Now, remember what I said about one of the things was you got a fever or you felt very hot. What would their answer to that be? Have a think. Can you remember Galen's theory of opposites? I'm glad you can. So if you're feeling hot and feverish and very, very unwell, answer? Have cooler foods. Avoid potter foods like garlic, onions, things like that. The theory of opposites playing a part in the treatment of the Black Death. Now, they also, bizarrely, blamed certain types of people. For example, they blamed Jews and they drove the Jews out. I mean, sometimes they actually killed the Jews. Or they would say, right, what we're going to do is keep outsiders, keep them away so that they don't bring the disease to us. Now, in a way, you could argue that's quite a good idea if there's no disease there. But of course, if the disease is already in the town or the city, it's not going to work. But for example, Gloucester. Gloucester did not allow people from Bristol into their city because Bristol had the Black Death and they didn't. Of course, it didn't work because the rats are coming in with the fleas. But again, you can see that's possibly not a silly or a stupid idea. We didn't really allow ships to come in from France across the English Channel. What we would do is say, right, that ship has arrived. We need to check if those people are OK. So the ship would stay there for 40 days. Now, 40 in French is 40. Très bien. Well done. And that's where we get our word quarantine from. So if we are bringing a dog into Britain, it has to go into quarantine for a certain amount of time to check it's healthy. It comes from the time of the Black Death. Now, just to finish with, here are some really, really bizarre, really, really quite strange ideas that they have. OK, all attempts to answer. Now, you might think that the flowers, you might think that that was a blooming crazy idea. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, there's no more silly jokes now. But here's some other what we might think are really strange ideas. Some people would have a bath and sit in it, but instead of it being water, it would be human wee or urine. Now, that to me sounds like a really bad idea. Sorry, 
sorry, sorry about that. Remember I said about smells, strong smells. Some people, unbelievable, will get a bit of human poo, put it in a bag and tie it round their neck. Oh, yucky. That is terrible. Some people would say, aha, we're going to have a mixture, a potion. Now you might think, oh, that's good. It's a bit like medicine. Unfortunately, though, some of these potions included arsenic, which is a poison. Not such a good idea now. Remember what I said about the lumps under the armpits, the buboes? Sometimes they would cut them open and drain them out. Not only was that horrendously painful, but it wouldn't actually do anything. And again, death could follow. Here's the last one. And again, very, very strange. Don't cut the bubo this time. Get some bread and rub the bread all over it and round it. Then take the bread and bury it in the ground. What can that do? Will that help? It seems to me as if some people weren't using their loaf there. Sorry, no more, no more. That is the last one. So, to finish, what does the Black Death tell us about medicine? Number one, their understanding of the cause of disease was very, very poor. Causes, not good at all in the 1340s. As a result of that, as a consequence of that, 75 million people died around the world. We say at least a million, possibly even more, died here in Britain. That's about one in three of the population. There was no change. There was no improvement. In fact, it was just continuity. Continuing their poor understanding. The Black Death is good for showing that. Hope it's been useful. What we'll have a look at in video three is the rest of the ideas in medieval Britain. We've just looked at one case study here. What about other areas of medicine in medieval Britain? Video three, coming soon. All the best now. Hope it's been useful. Speak to you soon.